In section two, we are going to be talking about basic data analysis with two main objectives. The first is to talk about the types of data analysis problems that we're likely to encounter in an average day, and then how to use different techniques to solve those and understand what the problem actually is. Then we are going to go and talk a little bit more about Java components or what techniques you're going to use within the JDK to actually go about writing code in order to solve those problems. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the types of data analysis problems that we're likely to encounter and some of the different techniques that we'll use to solve each one. In this video, we're going to cover the role of story problems, statistical problems, and visualizations, and talk about different strategies that we can use to solve problems in each particular domain. Story problems are probably the most common ones that I encounter, and the main questions that I look for are, what problem is it that you're actually trying to solve, where does the data come from, and which techniques actually apply to solving this particular problem. And the reason is that if we go out to solve a problem, we want to make sure that we come up with an answer to that problem, not just an answer. So one example story that we have here is, I've held a stock for a long time. I want to sell it in some time in the future, but I'm not in any hurry. Now, when we look at this, we want to be able to figure out the maximum amount of profit someone can make or the minimal loss that they can make. So the way, or what I might want to look at is predictive analytics. This is a bit of a statistical problem, and I might be able to get my data from a stock price or website or that CSV that we looked at before. Another case is if we're doing competitive analysis, how do we rank the feedback from a competitor's customer? We don't have the ability to survey those customers because they're not our customers. They're actually using our competitor's product, so we can't just go out and ask them questions. So we have to figure out how do we get the data in order to answer this question. And some of the things that we can use is text sentiment analysis. And we can probably get this data from Twitter, doing a survey of different people through a third party, or Stack Overflow if it's in the technology domain. And what we can look for is the presence or absence of a feedback based on this product relative to other products that they've launched and check what the sentiment of anything that was written was, assuming a lot of things were written. Now, the approach that we have to story problems is learn the techniques of when and when not to apply certain techniques. And then we want to figure out how to obtain that data that we can figure out to look at. And then we want to be able to parse that data because the data is rarely in the exact form that we want. Nobody's ever going to come to us and say, hey, I have all the data. I just need somebody to look at it. Generally speaking, they'll say, well, we have a lot of data, but we don't know quite how to make sense of it. So that's what we need your help for. And we're going to cover how to do this in section five and six a little later on. Statistical problems, some of the questions that we look at and we'll talk about in section three, are questions like, what's the range? What's the normal value for this? How do we pick out outliers? And we'll want to do predictive and correlation problems. And some of the techniques that we'll use for this are linear and exponential regression. And the reason that we're going to want to use linear and exponential regressions is to figure out lines of best fits and be able to predict some types of data that we don't already have. Now, when you have questions like what goes together, those are questions about Bayesian classification. So what's the probability that these unknown items go together, which we'll cover a little bit in section four. For example, people like manicures, people like frozen yogurt, but do people actually like them together? That answer is no. And I actually lived near a restaurant that did this. And of course they went out of business because those do not actually overlap. And if you were to run some classifiers on it or just think about it for a minute, you could tell that those do not go together. And now another technique that we'll deal with later on is the role of graph analysis. So how do we track up connections between different nodes? How do we see what nodes connect and how are they related? And one example that you might want to solve with this is within a group of people, who are the leaders and how does the communication pattern flow between them? Now for visualizations, visualizations are always very important because they give us a clear pictorial representation of the data that we want to look at. So here I've written an application called Visualize FX that we're going to use in order to visualize particular stock quotes. So here we have plot stock data and what I'm going to do is to read through that stock data that we had before and I'm just going to plot it on a general chart. So here I have my xychart.series. I'm going to go through and read that file as a stream based relative to the class path and I'm going to do that same reader and line number reader as before simply because I always want to make sure that I know what number line that I'm on. I just find that generally a helpful thing to do. 
So then we read the first line because that's just header data. And then we're going to read in each stock quote and we're going to print out the date or we're going to plot out the date and the closing price on that particular day. And by having this as a chart, we're able to just get a picture of how that stock performs much easier than we would if we were going to scroll through just a raw text data because we can see in the picture, is it moving up or down? And then because this is a visual application, we're going to add it to our graph and then we're going to display that chart. So there we say chart.getDataStream. We're going to flat map that stream. And for each element, we're going to put a tool tip on it so that we can hover over it and see what the actual value was there so that we don't have to look at it. We can just go and see what was it, what was the core value, which is just a little nicety when you mouse over a chart. So if I run this application right here, we'll see it spinning through. The Java is loading up. And in just a second, we should have our chart pop up. So there we go. Here's a visualization of that stock price. And if we expand this a little bit or zoom in, we should be able to see and get a picture with all of the dots representing the closing price of each particular day. And if we mouse over each one, there's the tooltip listing the date. So here it closed at 2160. And you can see a relative pattern where it uh, was down and then it spiked up and bounced around for a little while as it slowly kind of moved back down to where it was before. So now when it comes to charts, not all charts are the same. So there's actually a handy chart of what type of chart you'll want to use to communicate whatever you have. Are you doing a comparison? Are you doing a relationship, composition, or distribution? Because we don't want to choose the wrong chart and inadvertently convey the wrong message. This is just a handy way, or if you have a chart that you want to use, what does that chart actually tell people about? For example, I wouldn't use a bar chart if I want to show the composition of something, or I wouldn't use a line region or a scatter chart if I want to show relationships between things. Actually, scatter chart does show relationships between things, but I wouldn't use a scatter chart if I want to show a pie chart because that just doesn't make sense. Now, generating charts in Java, there is uh, a couple different ways that we can do it. One is in the Java FX, there's a series of charting libraries, and we can have a charts overview and just take a look at those classes. Another one is if you use this method in Java FX called WebView, you can actually load up web applications or pure HTML5 applications and render things inside your application like Google Charts or really any HTML-based charting system because there's an embedded web browsers and embedded version of WebKit inside of all versions of JavaFX.